Picture this for a second. Imagine you're a third culture kid trying to navigate the up and coming changes this world and society has to offer. Now, you, now, even that sounds a little bit worded, you, you question to yourself, wait, what is a third culture kid? What does that even mean? Get that, amigos. My name is JJ, and I'm going to be doing my best to answer those questions. A little backstory. My mom is the Dominican. I was born in Santo Domingo in República Dominicana. All my honorable names that come to mind is Johnny Ventura, a.k.a. El Caballo, who, who when he was alive, he made the most iconic and killer merengue music out there. Next up on the list is Pedro Martinez, for all you baseball lovers. He is one of the best pitchers that he had a killer arm and he knew how to use it. For, for those who are comedy fans, Marcelo Hernandez. Funny guy, comedian, you can look him up. Up and coming, I'm expecting great things from him. Moving on, my dad, he was born in Nicaragua, in the city of Ocotal, Ocotal, known for having one of the best coffees in the world. also has prominent figures. Most recently, I hope I'm saying her name correctly, Shaynis Palacios. She is Miss Nicaragua. Alexis Arguello, professional boxer who competed from 1968 to 1995, who also decided to dabble in a little bit of politics and became a politician. Theo Vaughn. We, we got some Nikas over here, Indian toast of the Theo Vaughn podcast. Around wholesome guy. How my parents met was that much interesting. To summarize, met in Monterrey, Mexico, while studying at the University of Montemorelos, only took within. It only took a few months. And bada bing bada boom, yours truly is born. Fast forward a year and some months, my sister, and then within a few months, we pretty much were called and shipped. <laughs> shipped. Eh, I'll leave it in. We were sent. <laughs> we moved to Canada and have been traveling ever since. I have been back to the Dominican Republic a total of three, maybe four times. Caragua, I've been there a total of once. Politics, man. Con con, mangu, platano con mangu, pescado con mangu. Uh, platano frito, capoyo, or something related to pico pollo. If you know, you know. Dominicans, let me hear you out. Uh, had my fair share of fritanga, my catamales, rondon,
but even with the styles of how how my dad speaks Spanish or my mom speaks Spanish, it, it they they don't mesh. They just it just doesn't. Uh, my dad, just to give an example, my dad says cosa for thing. My mom says vaina, and in my head, because I'm learning how to differentiate stuff. I say thing. Cosa vaina thing. And so half the time I would have to try to actively be like, okay, what do you want? <laughs> Having these two different cultures really messed with my mind, you would think, because both speak Spanish, somehow they would blend oh so gracefully and I would have peace on this planet Earth. Not true. Uh, it, it was a struggle. It was a struggle going to school and having to try to learn English while still having my Spanish brain Ugh. don't regret having these two rooted rich cultures ingrain in me but I would say that I had to learn to be okay with it in my own way as I said before we moved around a lot so um, <laughs> in moving around from uh, church to church um, because my dad uh, worked is working as a pastor in so many cultures um, and eating so much d different styles of food and have learned to listen to different perspectives it really has made it a challenge for me to to know my place where I fit in in the grand scheme of things, it can be lonely sometimes. If you come in contact with someone who is different from you, whether it be because of the skin color, culture, uh, re religion, viewpoint on life, take the time to listen first to try to understand to ask questions be curious because you never know what you can learn from people